spoke about criticism. So he says that one should worship me in the archa by one's karma, performing one's prescribed duties, so that heart becomes purified. Now in the next six and a half verses, he gives a gradation of living beings. Although he has said that I am present in all beings, but everybody is not equal. And Vishnath Chakrati Thakur also commented that it is not possible that you feel everybody. Nobody can do that even if you are a king. So what is to be done? And he spoke about giving charity and giving respect. So how this respect and charity has to be given? And who is the topmost person 
or most suitable person for giving respect and charity. For that reason he is going to give a gradation of living beings that how there are different living beings who are superior and better than the others. So this is what he starts in verse number 28. He said, Jeevaha Shrestha Hiya Jeevanam Tataha Prana Vritaha Subhe Tataha Sachitta Pravras Tataha Shendriya Vritaha Tatrapi Sparsha Vedibhya Pravara Rasa Vedinaha Tebhyo Gandha Vidha Shrestha Tataha Shabda Vido Varaha Rupa Bheda Vidas Tatra Tataha Vyato Dataha Tesham Bhopada Shrestha Shatuspada Tato Dvipat Tato Varnas Shatwara Tesham Brahmana Uttama Brahmana Shupi Vedagyo Hi Arthagyo Bhadikas Tataha Arthagyat Sansaya Cheta Tataha Shrayan Swakarm Krit Mukta Sangas Tato Bhuyan Adogdha Dharma Matmanaha Tasman Mayer Pita Shesha Kriyar Tatman Irantaraha Mayer Pitatman and Punsho May Sangas the Karmanaha Nepashami Param Bhutam Akartuhu Samadarshanat. So he says that Jeevas Vesta hi a Jeevana. That those which have life are better than the lifeless objects. So there are lifeless objects, <coughs> and then there are living beings, grass, and life. <coughs> And there may be bhusa. So grass is better than dry bhusa, dry chaff. Because dry chaff has no life. And better than them are those which are having life air, which are breathing. And better than those are those which have consciousness, <coughs> so chitta. Because there are stones and stones are not conscious. Or they are also living beings. Mountains also are living beings. But they don't have chitta. And better than them are those who have indriya senses. <coughs> they have one, two, three, four, five. And better than those are those which can have the sensation of touch. And better than those who have sense of touch are those who have sense of taste. Rasavedi. And better than those are those who can smell Gandhavi. And better than those are those who can hear Shabda. And then better than those are who can make a dis distinction of form, color distinction. And better than those are who have teeth above and below. Because some have only teeth and one. And some have both. And better than those are those who have many legs. <coughs> and better than those are who have four legs. And better than those are who have two legs. And better than those are who have the varnas, brahman, kshatriya, vasya, sudha. And better than them or best among the varnas are the brahmanas. And among the brahmanas, those who know the Vedas, they are better. And 
Vedas. There are Brahmanas who only recite Vedas but don't know the meaning of the Vedas. If you ask them, there are Veda parties who recite the Vedic mantras but don't know the meaning. So better are those who know the meaning. And better than those who are meaning are those who can actually remove your doubt if you ask them the question. And better than those are who are performing their regular duties. There may be people who know but they don't follow. So come quick. And better than those who are renounced. Mat Sangas Adogdha Dharma Matmana. They are not milking the religion. There are also Brahmanas who milk religion. They may know Shastra, they can explain doubt, but they make business out of it. So these are renounced people. And better than them are those who offer all their activities to me. Tasman Mayarpit Ashesha Kriya Thatma Ivanti. And better than these people are those who offer themselves to God, means devotees. Not just offering their karma to God, but offering themselves, surrendering to God. Mai Arpitatmane Punsho, Mai Sanyasta Karma, who have given up all karma for my sake. Nepashyami Param Bhutam Akartuhu Samadarshanati says, I do not see. Anyone who is superior than this person who is not performing any activities for any material gain, only for service, and therefore he sees me everywhere. So this is the highest. So if all these activities which were described before that you do service or charity or association, then it has to be seen in light of this gradation. This was the line of commentary by Vallabhacharya, which is very nice. He was talking about giving respect and charity to living beings, seeing that Lord has his abode in that. Atmam saru bhutesu bhutatmanam kritalaya. Kirtalam means that I have made my abode, I am living in them. So he says, Loke api grihe padarth samarpane grihastaha prito bhavati ato bhutesu eva maam arahet. So he says that it is seen in the world that if you put some material in the house, then the owner of house becomes happy. Bring some material. So he says, because this body is the house of the Lord, he is situated in it. So if one does anything to the body, then one who is inside feels happy. Yatha yogyam cha puja ye naivaya santusyati. So one do puja as one deserves. So he says, Tatra Mukhyam Dhanam Manam Cha Maitri Cha. Three things were described. Charity, respect and friendship. So he says, Nikrishte Dhanam Utkrishte Manam Same Maitri. Those who are lower than you, you give charity. Those who are superior to you, you give respect. Those who are equal to you, make friendship. Eta tabi bin abhin chakshusha sarvatra atma gyanina kartavim. 
तो लोक दृष्टि एंड दिस इज द इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट ऑल दिस थ्री एक्टिविटी शुड बी डन विद अभिन्न चक्षुष सर्वत्र आत्मज्ञान मीन्स सींग द लॉर्ड एवरीवेयर नॉट विद एनी अदर इंटेंशन so not thinking that you are doing welfare your superior and feel inferior but seeing the presence of the lord therefore say natu lok drishtya not from the social point of view and therefore this makes a very big distinction from the social welfare which people do There are many organizations all over the world. They are doing social work, helping poor people or educating them. So that is different, and what is being described here is different. These are two separate things. And many times, this question is asked: that why Vaishnavas do not do social welfare? Because really speaking, Vaishnavas don't do social welfare. Because they they are doing devotion to Lord. They have offered themselves to Lord, and if they do anything, they do only service to the Lord, not to anybody else. Even if they are doing charity or worship or honor, it is only with the intention to please the Lord. who is in all these beings otherwise there is this interesting story of bharat maharaj in bhagavatam so very interesting incident that bharat maharaj was very elevated person and he gave up his kingdom he was chakravarti samrat he was an emperor he was ruling all over india so india got its name on his name india's name is bharata it comes from bharata but he gave up his kingdom because he wanted to just devote himself to meditation on the lord so he went to himalayas what is now nepal and he made his hut on the bank of gandaki river and he was taking bath three times a day in gandaki river and worshiping shalagram so shalagram comes from him and chanting mantra doing kirtan bhajan and so on absolutely renounced but then one day <coughs> he went to take the bath and he saw that one female deer was drinking water and when she was came to drink water one tiger came and tiger obviously wanted to prey on her so as the tiger roared and she became scared and out of fear she jumped on to the other side of the river and you know that in mountain area rivers are not very wide so she was able to jump across the river but she was pregnant and the baby fell off from her womb in the river and bharat was he was witnessing this so when she went on the other side and she ran away and the tiger also went away so he picked up this what you call deer cub baby baby deer newborn and he brought him or her whatever it was to the ashram and took care of this baby and then baby grew and you know how deer are very cute looking they may seem very innocent so he got very much attached to this deer and the attachment became so great that he was absorbed only in the deer and forgot 
anything else. And became so much worried about the safety of this deer. When the deer go into the forest, he will follow because some ferocious animal can eat him up. Finally, the time came for his death and the deer was not there. So he was so much thinking about the deer that what, ha what will happen to this deer, who will take care of the deer. And thinking of the deer, he died. And therefore, he became a deer. He paid a dear price for his life. <laughs> So this incident is analyzed by Jim Goswami that what was wrong with it? After all, he only showed compassion to the deer. And a Vaishnava is supposed to be compassionate. Jivardha Namiruchi? Vaishnava Seva. Nihan Chodha Dharma Nai Suna Sanata. He says that this is very big dharma. Jivardaya, Namiruchi, Vaishnava Seva. Compassion to living beings and taste in chanting the name and doing Vaishnava Seva. So he was being compassionate. So why he has to take birth again? Otherwise it is described that he was so absorbed in his worship that he used to have tears in his eyes while worshipping Shalala. He was manifesting symptoms of bhav. Satvik Bhava. So Jiva Goswami says that the problem was that he was being compassionate on deer independent. Independently. Independent of the world. And that is problematic for a Vaishnava. Because Vaishnava does not do anything independently. He surrendered to the Lord, his life, his mind, everything is surrendered to the Lord. So even if compassion is there, then compassion is to see that this is also created being of the Lord. The Lord is present in deer also. And he is always saying so many verses. He said, I am in them, I am in everybody, I am in all. So why he said again and again, at least five, six verses he spoke. Starting from verse number 21 and up to verse number 27. So seven verses Lord Kapila spoke and in every verse he is speaking about his being inside the living world. So this is to give stress on consciousness, that we have to fix our consciousness on Krishna and remember and then do activity accordingly. Otherwise it is not a devotional act. Then we will become proud that I am being very compassionate, I am doing welfare to these people. And then pride is the cause of fall. Manina Managena is very important. Then you will expect respect and when you don't get the respect then you freak out. You become angry, how dare you can do like this. So then you are finished. And you are not that is not part of devotion at all. So this is being described here that how the respect has to be given. So he made a very nice point here, Madhavacharya. He says Etadapi abhinna chakshusha sarvatra atma jnana nitartavya. Then this giving of respect, friendship, charity, whatever you do, it has to be done with abhinna chakshusha. Sarvatra atma bhava. Means seeing the presence of the Lord and not lok drishtya, not with the material vision. So this is very important. To know because many times this question is asked that should devotees give charity to poor people or not? They are sitting on the street or some poor people come, shall we give charity or not? Understood. And this question is raised many times. So now we understand what is to be done. So 
So Vishnath Chakrata Thakur, he comments. So his comment is that Nacha keval jnani eva madbhakta sarvatru tulle drishti sadharan nyene eva arhet apitu tartam nyene eva. This is also a very, very, very nice statement. He says that a devotee is different and a jnani is different. A jnani is one who sees everything equal. Samaya Sarvesu Bhutesu. Because Jnani is trying to get Brahman realization, so everywhere there is Brahman, he does not make distinctions. So he says that devotees should not be like that. He should not have equal vision everywhere. This also people don't like these days. People always say, don't discriminate, don't judge, don't do this. So if we don't discriminate, we don't judge, then why big list is given, this is better, and 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 this is better. So devotee is different, and jnani is different. And this difference must be known, because nature is to become influenced by what others are doing. It's a very common feeling among people these days that everything is equal, everything is same, all religions are equal and no difference between male and female. Why woman has to be treated differently than man and man differently than woman. Everyone is equal. So maybe that is all right from the jnani point of view but not from the bhakti point of view at least. So therefore he says that Nacha keval jnani mad bhakta sarvatra He says my devotee <coughs> does not keep equal vision like a jnani, seeing everybody equal, everything same. Sadharan nene varhet and therefore giving same respect to everyone. No, it is not. Apitu tartam nene but he gives respect according to the standard of the person. There is tartamya, gradation. So how things have to be respected? Then the gradation is being given. So the respect which is given to the last person is not same which will be given to the first one. All the presence of God is there everywhere and everything. There is no, no place or nothing in which it does not exist. So in six and a half words, this Sarva Shadvi. Ajiva Nam Ajiva Bhyo Jeevna Sashadidya Sakashat Jiva. So first thing is that Jiva Sreshtahi Ajiva Nam. So he says that the Jivas are better than the Ajivas. So first of all, Jiva is better than. Ajiva. <laughs> Just remember this. Something which is not Jiva is called Ajiva. And if it is not, if it is not Jiva, then you know that it is inferior. <laughs> and among the Jivas, then you can see who is better than the other. <laughs> But first, it has to be Jiva. <laughs> yeah, of course, table is inferior to mosquito. Mosquito can do many things. <laughs> yes. Jiva means that the soul is inside. Which has, which has life. Is not inert. Table is inert. Mosquito is flying around. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's everywhere. Jiva, Jiva is everywhere. Also on fire. Mm -hmm. yeah, Jiva is everywhere, but depending on 
how the consciousness is manifest. Mm -hmm. Jiva is also there in this piece of paper, but there is not consciousness manifest here. Yeah. Just the so, distinction. Yeah. But if something is for is serving, hmm? if something is for service, for example, if a table is for is used for service, then it will be more than a mosquito. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you are not paying obeisances to the table. <laughs> <laughs> that is the point. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously something which is in the used in the service is superior. If some, something is used, even if a flower is used in the service of the Lord, even if they are dry leaves of Tulsi, they are superior. But here he is not talking from, the, from this point of view. He is this scene without whether it is being used in service or not, just in general. So he says that if you have like jeevan sasya, like you have some crops, some plant which has become dry and then there is a live plant. So live plant is better than dry plant. Water. 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 Hmm? Water. Hmm? Water is ajiva. Ajiva. Yeah. Not a jiva, but ajiva means it is lower than jiva. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And so ajiva nam ajiva bhyo jivna sasyadi bhyo sakasat jiva ajivna sasyadi sveshta tatah prana bhrita bhumista jal akarshana vamanadi lingena prana bhritti bhrita jiva pashana de so better than this ajivna sasya or jiva is that which has prana or life so he says that this is, he refers to the stone, that stones are better than the, he doesn't say what is a genus of Sia, but looks like some plant or something. Because he says that these stones, they can suck water from the earth. They have the ability and they also vomit water. And this means that they have prana in them. So therefore he says that living stones. There are two types of stones, living stones and dead stones. But this is the same with water, living water and... Water. Yes. But living water, how do you know whether the water is living or dead? Mm. There has to be some symptom for that. Right? Mm. So what is the symptom? Pure? Hmm? Be pure? No, no. There has to be something else. This broadcast is not working too. <coughs> so he says that Purvam Udayanadi Cheshta Paschad Indriyena Stabdhai Ke Shravanad Anta Sangyana Parvata He says that these mountains they also have prana in them they have life in them because earlier the mountains used to fly they could fly from one place to another place. But when they were flying, then sometimes some stone piece will fall down. <laughs> so that was very dangerous. <laughs> so it will hit on the head of somebody down. Or some dust is falling, some mud is falling down. Imagine a mountain flying. Suddenly the mountain decides to fly. <laughs> so it can be very chaotic. 
Yeah. So it was actually happening before. Like this, mountains used to fly. And if they are flying very high, mm -hmm. and even if a small piece falls down from there, then it can kill a person. Right? And if it is a big mountain flying, it must be creating a lot of disturbance anyway. Maybe the noise was coming. I don't know. So when these mountains were flying, then it was very scary for people. And especially if some people are living on the mountain and then they are going down to the village <laughs> to get some food from there and suddenly they find that they are elsewhere now. And they don't know the language of the people here. They have reached another place. <laughs> because when you fly, you go farther. So how to talk with these people now? You have to adjust. So the sages who were living on the mountain in the caves, they complained to Indra that this is a very big problem. And this mountain, mountains are supposed to be stable. Krishna says that among the stable beings I am Himalaya, right? But previously they were not stable, they were unstable. So then Indra came and he cut the wings of these mountains. Mountains had, a mountain had wings before. So these Alps, maybe they were not... <laughs> <laughs> he must have come from maybe they came from Italy, south of Italy. And then they flew to this side. <laughs> so then Indra came on earth and he started chopping off the wings of all the mountains and then wherever they fell at that time then they stayed there. Then there was one mountain, he ran away. <laughs> when he saw this happening, he got scared, so he ran and he hid inside the Indian Ocean. That mountain's name is Manak, he's son of Himalaya. He was a baby mountain, he was born to Himalaya, so he flew away. <laughs> and he is inside, still he is inside. So that's why when Hanuman was flying from India to Sri Lanka to search for Sita and suddenly this mountain came up and he told Hanuman that please you can relax on me, you must be tired taking this big jump. So Hanuman said that now I have no time to relax. So this mountain then went down again. So that shows that the mountains are having life. That's why they say that some mountains are still growing mm -hmm. and some have become old. Himalaya is supposed to be a young mountain and Vindhya is a very old mountain. And for Vindhya is not growing and Himalaya is still growing. Can I say something? Is because uh, for example, my experience in Colombia, we have a lot of mountains, the Cordillera de los Andes, and uh, the Indians in, in, the, in the mountains is near the volcano, and they start to do bad things, you know, the violence and this and that, so the volcanoes start to, you know, mm -hmm. to, so I feel that the mountains, Mountain they have got, life. Mountain got angry. Yes. So therefore, respect the mountain also. That is the point. <laughs> so, Tebhyopi tasmad pasyanti padapaha tasmad jibranti padapaha iti moksh dharma vasna indriya vritti man udgama avkashadi gyanavanta vikshadi and superior to mountain are the plants, trees, because they also have life. So now science accepts this, that plants also have life. 
But you see here in the scriptures it is already written that even mountains have life, not to speak of plants. So he is quoting from Mahabharat and scholars accept that Mahabharat is very old, at least 1000 BC, if not more. So they say Tasmat Pashyanti Padva. He says, therefore, this is a quotation from Mahabharat. The trees they see and the trees they smell. So some study has been done that there is a one type of tree and if people go to cut this tree, then it sends message even few kilometers away to other trees. And these trees few kilometers away they start shrinking by getting this message. That means they not only they see and smell, but they are able to send messages, communicate. This is a scientific fact. People have uh, tested this. So, this is better than mountains. So, iti moksha dharmachana. <coughs> Indriya Vritti Mantra Udgam Avakashadi Jnana Vanta Yakshana. So the trees and plants they also have senses. Although they don't have very explicit senses like we have, but they do have senses. They feel vibrations of sound. Music has influence on them. They like music. And if someone says bad things to them then they also feel that. I was reading a story that some tribal area in a country, when they want to uh, want a tree, the wood, they don't cut the tree. They just go to the tree, the whole village, and they abuse the tree. And then the tree dies. And they let the wood. So the tree is also listening and understanding their language. <coughs> Can I ask something to that? For the, the Sanskrit word, when you say this is better than the other one, can there be used another word than better? Superior. Superior. And Tasmad Api Sakashat means the same thing. Yes. Basically, the, all the consciousness is manifest. Tatrabhi Tebhyopi. Sparsh Vedi Bhyo Ras Vedi No Mirti Kadi Bhojya Bhojya Gyan No Gandu Padhyane Then better than those are which have the feeling of sense of touch. So Vrikshadi Bhyo Ras Vedi No So Then better than this <coughs> are the Ras Vedina who know the taste. Mirtikadi Swaswa Bhujya Bhujya Gyanina. So that means who understand what what is good for me to eat and what is not good for me to eat. And he says here Gandhu Padhyadya. Must be some kind of worm or something. Gandhu Padhyadya. And Gandhavido Bakuladi Puspa Sukshma Kita and better than those are who can smell. So he says these are small uh, Kita worms who smell the fragrance of the flowers. And then Shabda Vida Shabda Sravnena Palayan Vanta Kecha Jala Kita 
there are some worms in the water that if they hear the sound they run away so they are better than the other ones and a rupa vidha better than them are those who can make a distinction of color like crow etc the birds you know, have the knowledge of color ubhato danta and then there are those who have teeth below and above like snakes have teeth both sides and bahupada who have many feet like the brahmara bumblebee they have six feet so they are called shatpadi also tesam pushpa kashtadi kartan lingena bhato dantatvam gena so he says they can also cut the flower and the wood this shows that they have teeth both above and below and chatuspada is the animal four legged animals cows buffaloes deers and better than them are the human beings who have two legs so up up till now there was everything animals birds reptiles they are all lower than human beings because they have two legs of course in two legs we also have birds birds also have two legs right and i think in two legs but here it means human beings and then etasham purpurvuta utrotrasham samantayu guna dhikyad adhikyam so he says that here we we must understand that the later ones are superior than the previous ones because they have more qualities in them but dev adhisthana adi vishesh guna adhikya vicharena sri govardhan venkata chaladi su tulasya adi su cha sarvate parama adhikya adhimyatva adhikya shastra prasiddha but if we see mountains like govardhan giri or venkatachal or lord venkateshwar is there so these are superior than everything in all although they are mountains so they should not be counted among the general things so therefore this answer to your question what about tables being used in the service so anything which is used in the service is more holy than which is not being used in the service so similarly a tulsi plant although it is a plant but it is worshipable similarly cow although it's four legged but it is worshipable even by two legged animals so <laughs> so they are special they are not part of the general category and why they are special because they have superior qualities therefore they need to be worshiped and their glories are described in the shastra like ganga gange gange tiya bhru yatiya jana pisa sahasra if you call ganga ganga even from 100 years now then your sins are destroyed then ganga cannot be counted just like a normal water or the so he says that we have to understand from shastra from shastra is saying about the and then among the human beings then of course the people who are following the varnashram which is now almost non existent and nobody wants to talk about it except if they want to criticize it but here it is said to be better than so varnashram is better than those who are not following varnashram and the varnashram also brahmana because brahmana is supposed to be the head of the society brahmana is not by caste but one who studies shastra one who studies the vedas so but among the student of the vedas or one who study the vedas those who know the meaning they are better 
example, just reciting Vedas also has some potency, some power, but ultimately we have to understand. And better than those are who not only understand, but who can explain it to others, who can teach it to others. And better than them are those who are not only they can explain, but they also follow. There may be some people who are not performing their rituals, their duties properly. And then superior to them are those who are offering their activities to the Lord. And then those, the last is the category of devotees. So he says, Tatas tadrusha dapi svakarmakrit samyag akartu shakashat svakarmakrit. So one who is performing his or her duty properly is better than one who is not doing it properly, even if he knows the meaning of the Vedas. And then superior to that is Mukta Sangha, means one who is detached from the fruits of one's activities in the Jnana. Swasva Dharma Madogdha Purva Dasakrit Swasva Dharma Fal Sayadrihita. So he is not making any business of religion then he is superior to any one of this. And then of course he spoke about Maya Pitatma Upanishad, Mayi Sanyasti Karma. Asmad api sakashat mai man naam rupa disu arpita shesha kriya shamane nadi vyapara One who has offered all his activities unto me means the activities of the eyes, ears, hands, legs, whatever is done. Artha ashraya atmano ahintaspad mamtaspad mano buddhyadi and also one's own ego possessions nirantar karma jnanadi vyavdhan sunya and he is not engaged in the ritualistic activities or the activities related to jnana mai mat prapti artham sanyast karma and he has given up everything to attain me takta varnasham dharmat mat krite takta dharma so one who has given up one's prescribed du duties for the sake of devotion to the Lord. Akartu mad bhakta vapi bhagwan eva me bhaktim kariyati ti maddhi And then lastly he says that napasyami param bhutam akartu sandarsana He says the superior person is one who thinks that he or she is not the doer. So not taking the pride that I did this, I did that. Even the act of devotion, he makes this very nice point. He says, even when they are doing devotional activity, they feel that it is Lord only who is doing it. Or who is giving me the energy to do it, otherwise I am no one. I cannot do it. So this way one remains free from pride. Otherwise we become proud and then as soon as the pride comes, then there is a problem then there will be disharmony, there will be disturbance to the mind. Because if your pride is not satisfied by others, by giving respect, then you will disturb. So, Swatantrayana Kartritva Abhiman Sunya. There is no sense of pride that I am an independent doer. But Although we do activities, but we feel that we are doing it by the grace of the Lord. That's all. So then we remain free from pride. It is very important to have this consciousness, especially for the devotees. And samadarsanath swasyam samameva sukhdukhadikam sarvatra pasyata. And samadarsan means 
to see everywhere that all the happiness and pleasure it is coming as it comes to others as it comes to me when others also feel it in the same way yaduktam bhagavata as lord himself has spoken atmapam mi sarvatra sampashyati yojana sukham vayadi va dukham sayogi parmo matah says arjuna one who sees everything according to one's own feelings means as i feel happiness or some something which gives me pleasure it also gives pleasure to others something which gives me pain it also gives pain to others and <coughs> this is how you understand what is happiness and what is misery so he says that that is a supreme yogi एंड विद्या विनय संपन्न ब्राह्मण गवि हस्तिनी सुनी चाहिए पंडित समदर्शन पंडित इज समर्शी और हैज इक्वल विजन बिकॉज ही इज नॉलेजेबल ही इज हम्बल एंड दस ही सीज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द लॉर्ड वन ए ब्राह्मण काउ एलिफेंट उक्त समर्शि वाचिंग जीव श्रेष्ठ है जीव भे इत्यादि प्रक्रांत वाक्य विरोध सो इस दैट दिस टाइप ऑफ संदर्शित इज अगेंस्ट व्हाट वाज सेड अर्लियर संदर्शित वाच्यम जीव श्रेष्ठ या जीवाना बिकॉज देयर ही हेज स्पोकन दिस इज बेटर देन दैट दिस इज बेटर देन दैट and here he is talking about any equal vision so this equal vision here is in the sense as we have explained to see the feelings of happiness and distress that as i feel and others also feel this is the meaning of samvasha otherwise he says that it will contradict what is being said here So this is the end of this gradation. And then we are again going to speak about Lord, how He is managing everything. Right there, you know how I said, everybody reaches the Lord. Hmm. Does everybody reaches the Lord? Everybody can reach the Lord. No, at the end, I mean. There is no end. Yeah. <laughs> There is no such thing as end. This is an ongoing process. about uh, the consciousness behind an action which makes the difference in quality and gradation so then let's say that a devotee is charitable but mm -hmm. the person who is the recipient of the charity in a sense is not qualified i mean i mean is a thief or is a person who is not behaving properly so but the devotee has the idea that oh this is part of the creation of the lord i respect this particular entity and i uh, i give it to uh, this person uh, needs according to because this this is part of the lord creation so this is the devotion of service oh no actually this question can have different answers because it depends what is the status of the devotee himself 
there are very elevated devotees and even if somebody is a thief they don't see anything they only see God and all mm. and they treat like that and the story about I think about Namdev he was sitting somewhere in the cave and he was making some chapati and one dog came took one chapati and ran away so then he was running behind the dog but he was not running behind the dog to chase him away or anything, but he was running with a katori to put some ghee on the chapati. Yes. <laughs> and he was saying, Oh my lord, don't eat chapati without. Oh. Because in India we don't eat chapati without putting ghee on it. So that was his vision was like that. He was saying. So we don't have to also act artificial. And therefore, Madhyam Bhakta is also described that Ishvara Tad Adhinasu Balasu Dusat Suchan Kripa Maitri Prem Maitri Kripa Pakshaya Karoti Sa Madhyam That you behave in four ways, you do worship of Ishvara and Maitri with devotees, Prem Maitri Kripa to those who are lower and upeksha to those who are envious. Mm -hmm. Yes. So therefore if you know that he is a thief and you are actually seeing him as a thief, then you also deal accordingly. Don't encourage him to be a thief. So those who are seeing God even in a thief, they, they are a very elevated platform and their behavior will actually change the thief also. But when we are not like that, then if we act in that manner, we are not going to influence the thief, but the thief will exploit you. Mm -hmm. Also and then you will feel disturbed yeah. because you are not on that level. There is also saying that you acquire the quality of the person whom you are serving. Yes. So then you have to be very careful whom you are going to serve and how you Yeah, that's why you, he said that you, you serve without low drishti, without the social point of view. Mm -hmm. You serve keeping God in mind. But actually you are not serving this person, but you are serving God mm -hmm. only. And then again about this uh, absorbing the mind in the activities and the service. So like this devotee, he was thinking, he was crying while worshipping the, the sadhana, and then his mind became absorbed in the deer. So, he has to take darshan of the deer. So this kind of absorption, absorption which comes from the material uh, compassion, and the material in the sense that is disconnected with the feeling that this is like part of the world or something. Yes. So this is the mistake. That is yeah, that is the mistake. Because they said that he was serving the deer, but thinking that the deer is anyway, the Lord has sent him there, that he can serve him. Mm, then there is no problem. Yeah, no problem. Then he is not going to neglect his salagram worship. Mm. But he neglected mm. because he became attached to the deer. Okay. So he gave up the kingdom and now he became attached to the deer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.